I guess while we're staying on MVPs, um, this was a topic that we threw around. Uh, really, really like looking forward to this too. Just, just talking about MVP candidates. And I'd first like to say that like looking at this season, I think this is the first season in a very long time where you can actually look at players across the league and just take out the quarterback. I mean, I think there hasn't been you know, too many quarterbacks where we could clearly say like, that's been the best player, you know, has had the most impact on his team to win games this season. I think, you know, defenses for some of the best teams in this league have really stepped up. You know, a lot of their weapons obviously have been complete game breakers, like getting, you know, all sorts of, uh, you know, stats and scores like on the board and things like that. So I guess with that, uh, Wayne and I are just going to go back and forth. We're going to have a top five, uh, seeing where we kind of rank them, but, Honestly, it's it's going to be kind of labeled as non-quarterback MVP candidates. But for me as well, these are legitimate MVP candidates, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I know for some, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to go back and forth on this. And you know, it's going to be fun because like you mentioned, like, what, like who would have thought like, oh, Dak Prescott's the MVP of the season, right? Uh, there just hasn't been that whole like Patrick Mahomes, like you know, scheduled to get like 50 touchdowns type of season right now. And just kind of way that the that things have been kind of unfolding so far. So definitely looking forward to, I guess, talking about the non-quarterbacks, getting the, giving them some love there, you know? For sure. Um, so I guess let, let's start with you, your number five uh, non-quarterback MVP candidate. Yeah, number five. Do you want to throw out some honorable mentions here uh, real quick? Sure. I do have, sure. yeah, I want to get, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> real quick, real quick. I want to give some props to AJ Brown. I'm on Ross St. Brown. And, you know, uh, uh, my fringe pick here, uh, Deron Bland, I, I kind of edged another person in front of you for this. So, uh, but, but number five, not to, you know, go off tangent again here, I got, I got Panay Sewell. I got Panay Sewell, actually. I'm picking offensive tackle, right, uh, as an MVP. I think if you ask any, 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 like, Detroit Lions fan, right, who is the best player on our offense, right? Like a true Detroit Lions fan. Who are they going to say? Are they going to say, like, it's just in terms of uh, sheer talent and, you know, even maybe where they rank at the position, right? Like Panay Sewell, he's playing the best. He, he's the best tackle right now in football. At least I think according to PFF, uh, he's he allowed his first sack of the season, of the season, this, just this past week against the Saints. He hasn't before that, he hadn't allowed a sack since it was like week 10 of 2022. So and and his run blocking has been tremendous too. Like you know, he's been he's been the guy that it's like, hey, third and short or something. Hey, let's maybe go to the tackle side or you know, third and three. Let's go toward the Panay Newell's the Sewell side. Let's run Montgomery, get those, you know, uh short yardage, right? Like he's been that kind of guy. And then obviously protecting Jared Goff. Like Jared Goff is in some sort of mobile quarterback that runs around and, you know, scramble and create more time uh, in the pocket. Uh, that's certainly where Panay Sula has been that staple hold is in pass protection, has been one of the top ranked uh, offensive linemen in pa pass protection, too. And it, it's interesting now this whole thing about, you know, blind side versus right tackle, right? Like, oh, the left tackle ought to be more valuable. Like in the modern day NFL, that's become less of a thing just because. Both edge rushers can annihilate the quarterback these days, so and can affect the quarterback just as much. You know, if if a quarterback sees a uh, pressure versus maybe not sees a pressure, right? Maybe they do a move or something like that that you know gets them to throw the ball a little bit quicker, right? Things like that happen more so in the left tackle versus right tackle type of conundrum. There, anyway, I love Panay Sewell. I think he ought to get some props for some votes or something for. MVP, that's my case uh, for the five spot here for non-offensive MVP of the season. Yeah, I love it, man. It's 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 never. I mean, these guys never get recognized for the talents that they are. It's it's it sucks. I mean, I wish there were more identifiable stats or recordings of those, marketing of those that you know tackles, guards, centers are able to compile over the course of the year. Like, I think the pancake is one thing that. They look at, I mean, obviously, like if you can decrease pressure or QB hits, sacks, whatever it is, pass deflections, like that should all be counted, recorded. I'm sure, I'm sure there are sites like PFF or other like super nerdy uh, <laughs> you know, football stat sites that, that probably do look at this stuff, but 
No, I think your argument's awesome. I mean, Detroit, again, like number two offense in the game. You look at some of the weapons on there. It's like, as we were talking about it for the Bears, you know, Lions matchup, it's like, yeah, when you really think about it, I mean, Amon Ross St. Brown is like a top talent at wide receiver. But then you really start to look around, you're like, you know, Gibbs and Laporter are in year one. Monty was a retread from the Bears. Um, they're they're making something out of Jameson Williams now. It's it's just super interesting. Khalif Raymond's been great, but it's like, how did they become great? And it's like because Goff has found a way to rejuvenate himself to have time to be able to, you know, kind of get it out to these folks. And obviously with the running backs, like they need those holes to kind of to kind of um, you know, exploit to make their game stand out. So it's like who's creating all that time and who's creating all that space? And it's like it's guys like Panay Pene Sewell, and he's obviously at the top of his game, he's he's probably revered as, you know, the top tackle in football. So yeah, man, I love it. Sign me up. I've, I'd give him votes for sure. Like he'd have votes, uh, you know, going on the board for MVP if I was a writer. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Who is your uh, number five for non-offensive MVP or a non-QB MVP? Yeah, um, for me, uh, it's TJ Watt. I, uh, I I was thinking in a similar vein in terms of let's look at let's look at guys who really disrupt the game um, in ways where you know, they're not touching the ball always. And and TJ Watt for me is, has been one of those guys in the game for a long time. Uh, Right now he's ranked second in the league with 14 sacks. Um, His tackle totals have been increasing uh, year over year to where, you know, he's really kind of standing out as like a hybrid linebacker edge uh, type player for them. I mean, huge disruptor. I mean, causing um, a handful of, you know, fumbles over the course of the year. He's had a, a few recoveries. Uh, he had a big interception that led to a touchdown this year. But I think about who the Steelers are and how they're able to compete at the level that they do with the talent that we kind of, you know, scoff at. I mean, it's kind of a big choke. I mean, Kenny Pickett and, you know, a thinned out receiving core, uh, guys that we're like looking at is, you know, taking those next steps but really haven't so far. I mean, Najee is kind of like clowned on as being like a super bust and like Jalen Warren's obviously, you know, maybe the more special of the two backs and things, but it just feels like a team that's really, you know, not super established when you look at, you know, everything that they really encompass, but in the same sense, like they're seven and five, they're fighting for a playoff spot. You know, Tomlin, you know, definitely gets his flowers when it comes to being one of the top coaches in the game, but you know, we, we've seen obviously TJ, you know, grab um, defensive player of the year award, you know, in the past, but in the same sense, like if I was thinking about guys that, you know, really are the most valuable for their franchise, like the Steelers without TJ Watt, you know, that, that may be the one thing that could take them, you know, completely down. I mean, I have him as my number four, uh, not, not too good. Uh, maybe <laughs> awesome. Moving ahead of the way. Yeah. Maybe moving ahead of the way. I mean, just kind of work like that, huh? <laughs> So yeah, he was my number four. Uh, Mike, I mean, yeah, like you said, they're seven and five. This team has no business being seven and five. Uh, <laughs> they, I think, the point differential is nuts. I think it's like thirty points. Thirty points. Like they, they've the, the defense has given up thirty points more than the offense has, you know, produced or whatever. Like this is crazy. What's happening over there in Pittsburgh? Uh, and it is players like T.J. Watt. Like if you take T.J. Watt out of there. Like the defense is still you know pretty good, like with Highsmith and Nick Fitzpatrick and all that, but like to this point where that they're you know able to win games basically because of the defense, that's all on TJ Watt. Like Mike Tomlin said, best defensive player on the planet. Um, you know, I know there's there's been a lot of talks, I think, with Miles Garrett and such, and definitely don't wanna discredit him too much and like Nick Bosa, but in my opinion, like at least this season, I think TJ Watt is having the best season. Uh, out of all those uh, players there, uh, you know, the fumble recovery, you know, TD, interception, everything is able, he's been able to do that in a very competitive uh, division, albeit, and then having absolutely the third worst offense and scoring in the NFL too. Yeah, he's definitely, in my opinion, he might be up for, I think, defensive player or defensive MVP. I think he would probably be my pick, you know, maybe him or Deron Bland, right? So Definitely love me some TJ Watt for sure. Sounds good. Um, who's your number four? Oh, well, he was my number four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so who, I should ask you. Go back? Yeah, yeah. Go. Cool. Who is your number yeah. four? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so 
Pivot, pivoting it away, we're going to go with my number four is going to be C.D. Lamb. Uh, obviously, of the Cowboys, we just you know talked about Dak Prescott. Um, for me, for most of the first half of this year, um, when we didn't think Dak was the running for MVP, the only guy putting up credible numbers out of out of Dallas was C.D. Lamb. Um, they were looking for options, you know, beyond him. Um, guys like Ferguson were kind of you know, hit or miss week to week. Cooks was a complete non-factor. Pollard was not not at all, you know, living up to the standards or hype that it was placed on him at the beginning of the year. Um, and I think Dak was steady, but, you know, his name wasn't really being, you know, catapulted toward, you know, maybe the top of, of all quarterbacks in the NFL at that point in time. So I just think about the guys that really, you know, carried the load um, you know, over the course of the season for Dallas. Obviously their defense is incredible. Um, there's a couple guys there. I definitely think you could put in this category of, you know, non-quarterback MVPs with Bland and Parsons, but at least offensively, I mean, 90 receptions through week 13, 1100 plus yards. He's got seven touchdowns. I mean, you would kind of project that forward the very least I could see him getting 130 receptions, you know, maybe 1500 plus yards. I mean, that is a disgusting season. And um, I think he could definitely get there. I mean, just the way they've been, kind of playing and putting up their numbers uh he could and and you know do i think he'll actually get actual um mvp consideration like i don't know man i think there's some guys above him but he's definitely been um you know taking his game to the most elite level at this point and i think folks are going to start putting him in the conversation for best wide receiver in the game at some point very soon my number three is CD Lamb, actually. So <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll jump right into it. Basically, you know, uh, I love me some CD Lamb, and like you were saying, like, I don't think he gets the credit that maybe the Jamar Chases of the world uh, or the Justin Jeffersons of the world get, or AJ Brown, or et cetera, et cetera. Again, not to discredit them, but I think he belongs in that picture. Um, you know, we saw what he did last season, right? He got like 100 receptions or something like that. I think last season, a uh, bunch of yards, et cetera, et cetera. But I think he's having a better season this season. Cowboys in general are. And like you were mentioning, like, you know, Pollard hasn't had the best season. I think his yards per carry is like under, under four, if I'm not mistaken. So hasn't really had that level of production that I think, you know, maybe some of us expected him to. But, you know, CeeDee Lamb, he's definitely held his uh, end the bargain. You know, they lost Schultz in the off season and they didn't, they didn't really add too many other weapons, I think to, uh, to that arsenal, you know, yeah, they're passing the ball more to Ferguson, but it's only really been of late that Prescott's developed more of a, you know, of a kind of a chemistry with Ferguson and, and at the tight end position, you know, and player like Gallup and then Brandon cooks, he's uh, Prescott's looking more to at least of recent, but early on in the season, yeah, it was very much on CD lamb kind of carrying the offense really. So, you know, uh, definitely want to give some props towards C.D. Lamb, what he's been able to do, think there. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. Just great player overall. Uh, and, I don't know, he, he even has a running, a rushing touchdown as well. So he's been used uh, on the running game a little bit. I think he has like 60-some odd yards as well. So has had an impact on multiple fronts, I think, for the, the, the Cowboys, who they're definitely clicking, you know, right now. And, a lot of that, obviously, yeah, is to, uh, I guess, our MVP candidate there with Prescott. But then a lot of it, in my opinion, too, is also C.D. Lamb, the way he's been producing as well. For sure. Um, well, given that was your number three, you're probably curious who mine is, given that I'm sure we have the same top two at this point. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this may come as a surprise to many folks, but this guy, by name, you know, Cache alone is probably not going to be looked at as an MVP, but in the same sense, like his numbers speak volumes and for what he's done for his franchise, I think you've got to give him, you know, the respect that he deserves at this point. So with number three, uh, I went with Raheem, the dream Mostert uh, from Miami, um, probably a bit controversial. Um, I know it doesn't roll off the tongue, like very well for most folks, but he's got the second most touchdowns in the league for any positional player at this point. Um, just one shy of Christian McCaffrey. Um, he's carried the load for Miami, to be honest with you, uh, throughout this entire year on the ground. I mean, they came into this year with what they thought was going to be a three headed monster. You know, Jeff Wilson starts off the year on the IR, um, has ultimately become a non-factor for Miami, even when healthy now. 
And Devon Achan was the thing that everybody was running to their waiver wire to go pick up and grab. And obviously had that amazing, you know, game against the Broncos when they won 70 to 20. But what's kind of unknown is even in that same game, Mostert, you know, went over a hundred with a couple touchdowns of his own. So it was like he, you know, was a non-factor or was completely outshadowed in that case. And it's kind of crazy because, you know, you look at the entire year and I think everybody would want to talk about Achan and who he is and what he's going to be. But, you know, Mostert's just been super steady. Uh, as at this point, he's, you know, on his way to probably a thousand yards rushing, whether it's, you know, maybe this week or the one, you know, after that we talked about, he's got 16 touchdowns on the year and he's also had a lot of receiving work uh, as well. Um, not to the extent of one of my guys in the top two, but in the same sense, I feel like, you know, Miami being nine and three um, predicating a lot of their, you know, prowess on the offensive end. Um, there's another very special player on that team too. And, you know, we'll probably be talking about him very shortly here, but in the same sense, like, I just think he needs to get a lot of attention and respect this year. I mean, he's, I think he's a no doubt pro bowler, um, whatever else they may be able to shower on him uh, would be great. Cause I think, uh, you know, he's just been a rock for them from the start uh, of the season to, to right now. Yeah, no, I mean, I definitely looked at that for sure. It's 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 always that argument, I think, with running backs, right? If if Asian didn't have that, like, amazing performance, like, maybe actually Moster would get more of the love for MVP talks or Offensive Player of the Year talks. But, yeah, he's definitely not getting the love that I think he deserves. We can definitely talk about, like, positional value, uh, being part of Mike McDaniel's scheme. But in the end, you got to produce, and he's producing, you know, for – for the Dolphins there. So I definitely respect that that pick for sure. And he definitely needs to get more attention. And he definitely has been doing well from the fantasy perspective, at least. So, you know, definitely uh, got to give some props to it, whoever drafted him uh, in any leagues there. So, yeah. Yeah. Promise there's no conf conflict of interest here. He is on my <laughs> fantasy team. But in the same sense, I really do feel like he's had, you know, a really great year. But uh, yeah. in any case, we'll move on to number two. Wayne, who is that for you? You know, I I'll be it'll be interesting to see if we got the same number one and number two here. But number two for me, at least, I got CMC, uh, Christian McCaffrey. You know, leads the league in rushing, top fantasy running back, uh, leads the league in touchdowns as well. And the fun, the great, the great part, right, for his team, he's been healthy, right? So you know, definitely want to give some props for that. Uh, you know, for this team, for this 49ers team that's lost, you know, Debo Samuels and Trent Williams for some time, like he was the staple there and he's done, done it both running the ball and, you know, he's done it really effectively. Like I mentioned before, leading the league in rushing and he's also is able to catch out of the backfield, get touchdowns that way and, you know, create <laughs> havoc, uh, for defenses. So gotta show some love for Christian McCaffrey, what he's been able to do. This season, being healthy, healthy Christian McCaffrey is so deadly. And yeah, this this 49ers team is very much uh, fortunate to have a player like him right now. Yeah, I mean, he's my number one. So I I feel really strongly about that. I don't think there's a player in this game that can do more on a football field that's not a quarterback. I mean, I... His his work in the receiving game, you know, it it almost mirrors like your wide receiver two, wide receiver three on, you know, most good teams at this point. But then he's just a complete running back as well. I mean, he can run between the tackles. Uh, he's got power, speed. Um, he's got incredible quickness and uh, just like agility, uh, kind of shaking off defenders and stuff like that. He's a great run blocker. It's like, I don't know, man. He's just got a nose uh, for the ball. He's got a feel for the game. I mean, obviously with his dad, you know, being a former pro, it just feels like the day that he walked into, you know, an NFL locker room, he was just ready to be a star. And he's just not disappointed from the time he left Stanford to, you know, now where he's at with San Fran. Um, I think it was hard. I mean, I looked at the top two. I know who your number one's probably going to be at this point. He's my number two, but it's hard because I think both teams, you know, there's a lot of stars on the rosters and you're kind of like trying to figure out like who really stands apart from being like the most valuable player on their team. But I mean, with San Fran, man, if they didn't have CMC there, I just, I feel like this is a completely different team. I think you take them down a couple of pegs, um, at least on the offensive side of the ball. And 
Yeah, I don't think Purdy, you know, is able to kind of, you know, establish his game in the same way without having somebody who's just a complete nightmare for defenses behind him. And it's just, he, he commands so much attention that I think, you know, Purdy is able to, uh, you know, establish some really great stat lines. Not that he's not deserved the credit that he's, you know, getting at this point, but in the same sense, I feel like his game would definitely take a huge knock without run CMC. Yeah. I mean, it is always that replacement or, you know, what would happen if that player was uh, replaced, you know, with kind of an average player in that, in that position to see uh, Christian McCaffrey these days is very much unique in that he's just as good of a runner as he is a receiver. Right. And, you know, especially for the fantasy leagues out there, that's awesome. So, um, yeah, I definitely want to give him some props and some flowers there. Like he's definitely held his own there. Um, but then number one, and I think it was number two, and this is the fun part, right? Like, you know, we can definitely talk more about, you know, who is worth more to their team in a way, right? Um, but yeah, Tyree Kill, like he's on, I mean, that's the thing. He's on track to break Calvin Johnson's record for receiving yards. Uh, he may be able to do it in 16 games, you know, make it a little bit more legitimate. Uh, to all the naysayers out there. So we'll see upon that. But, you know, number one, I think just in general, in terms of like uh, total points for most fancy leagues out there, especially the PPRs, uh, you know, eight out of 12, eight, eight out of the 12 games, he's uh, gotten a hundred plus yards. You know, we can definitely talk about his impact on that Miami Dolphins offense. Like how many secondaries are just like, we're, we're going to play back. And, how does that open up run lanes, the running game? Like maybe that's where I'm thinking about his impact from an MVP standpoint, especially in, you know, today's modern NFL where it's more so now these days, like let's, let's uh, play the pass first and then the run. So um, I just see he has a high level impact is able to, you know, yeah, have, have the Dolphins are able to have a more effective running game basically because of him. And then, yeah, you know, you know, we can talk about Tua too as like being an MVP candidate uh, from the QB side. You know, essentially because of him, and you know, like let's be honest, if if it wasn't for Tyree Kill, like I don't know, is is Tua gonna have the numbers he is having? It's hard to say exactly. So, but yeah, I just gotta give a lot of respect to Tyree Kill, uh, to the impact he's having, to the season he's having. It's gonna be historical, in my opinion. I think and. Yeah, we'll see what happens, I think, with regards to Offensive Player of the Year. But for me, I definitely got to pick Tyreek Kill as my non-QB MVP. Yeah, I mean, I think the differentiator for me was total touchdowns. I feel like, you know, McCaffrey having that by a pretty, you know, sizable margin at this point was the one differentiator. I mean, you look at their all-purpose yards, they're pretty comparable at this point. I mean, you give the nod to Tyreek Hill on, on total catches uh, in that sense versus, you know, McCaffrey on the ground and things like that. But no, you're right. I mean, he, he creates probably so much space for the other guys just to be able to operate in things where you're probably right. Like that plays a huge part in how Miami runs the ball. It obviously has, you know, made two a lot more successful, but the thing that's awesome about Tyreek is like, I think a lot of folks looked at him after leaving KC and thought, you know, this is just another, just another case of a wide receiver, you know, who was tied to a Hall of Fame quarterback that's now going to move, you know, to a more pedestrian franchise and try to do his own thing and make his own money, but he's going to fall flat. And it's like, it's been the exact opposite. It's been the best thing, you know, Tyreek probably could have done for, you know, his own name, his his own value, um, his own standing in this league, especially when we were talking about, you know, best receivers of all time. I mean, it's so funny because he comes in his own, like, you know, shape and size. Like we, we don't necessarily talk about the best wide receivers being someone of his, you know, stature and things like that. But, you know, with, when Wes, Wes Welker came out the other week and talked about, you know, Tyreek Hill versus Randy Moss, he says that Tyreek Hill's the most complete wide receiver he's ever you know, been around. He's able to run a complete route tree. You know, he said, there's nothing that this kid, you know, can't do. And, you know, Randy was more of like your deep ball threat, obviously had the size and things like that. But, I mean, just, just talking about what kind of athlete this kid is and obviously he's blazing fast and I mean, he's a, he's an absolute nightmare out there too. That's why when I was looking at both, it was like just very hard for me to, to make a decision because these are the two best players in football, um, you know, non-defensive, you know, players in that sense. But 
I really think, I mean, this is more of a public service announcement for the NFL or the writers, whatever it is that like, I think this year's MVP should be one of these two guys because honestly, following this year, I don't think we'll ever see any of the MVP candidates that will be quarterbacks this year be involved in that discussion. I think a lot of the great quarterbacks that are in the game right now are having off years. And this is one of those years where I think you got to really take a critical look and think about who's had the most impact on, on the game itself. And it's, it's one of these two guys uh, for sure, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I a hundred percent agree on that. Uh, you know, if, if it wasn't, you know, a Dak Prescott or you know, I, I think there's definitely this whole idea of like, basically the MVP is the best quarterback. And it's like, that really ought not to be the case, you know, uh, maybe, maybe not to the kicker standpoint. I, I was looking at this whole MVP thing, <laughs> non non quarterback MVPs that you brought up, and believe it or not, there was a kicker that won it like in 1982. Actually, I'm like, Are what? You, wow. Yeah, a kicker has <laughs> has won the non uh, has won an MVP before. I think it was like a strike ridden season, so it was a little bit shorter. Made all his field goals, which is great, I guess. During that time, like you know, now these days, like you know, you have a kicker ever so often, like maybe one or, one or two a year. They're like almost perfect or near perfect now, but I guess in, you know, 82, it was more so unheard of. So like, is that and, like and, and, Ray Finkel of the Dolphins? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. uh, yeah. <laughs> Seems in, is it? Or is it out? Yeah. yeah. Um, Laces out. Laces out. Laces out. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just like, it, it does, it does got to make you think, right? Like there's got to be more value. Like, why is it, why does it have to have, what is it uh, a, a, a wide receiver or a, a running back basically has these days now has to have like a historical season in order to, you know, get those votes for MVP. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's kind of stupid. And then, yeah, we were talking about the defensive side of the ball too. Uh, I think two defensive players have actually won MVP as well. Uh, I forget the, the other one, but the, the last one that I believe that won it, uh, was Warren's Taylor, which is like great, the best defensive player, you know, basically of all time, right? And yeah, there's that. It, it just kind of goes to show, like, you know, there's more to, I guess, football and football winning than just the quarterback, right? Like, there's just got to be more. Maybe not the kicker or punter, but I don't know. Yeah, like let's let's talk about the T.J. Watts. Let's get him more flowers. Let's talk about the Tyreeks and Christian McCaffrey, because. You know, yeah, lo and behold, like, you know, I, I think in any other sport, right, basketball or baseball, like any position can basically win MVP. But then for football, it's almost exclusively the quarterback. And I think that's stupid. Like, I honestly do. So I don't know. I, I, I think that's where there needs to be more thought put around, you know, how the NFL think, how the NFL kind of navigates or goes about this. But it's pretty ridiculous how that just always is the case, right? For sure. I mean, it's comparable to, you know, maybe this year being where a pitcher wins the MVP, you know, in that sense, it's like, let's really dive into that because there weren't enough candidates around the year where, you know, Verlander did it last, where it was like, oh, this actually makes sense. Like Verlander was, you know, the most dominant player of all uh, in this year for our league. So um, let's hope they get there. Um, if anything, this reel could be one of many out in the universe that, you know, help push them over the over the hump there. Hopefully they're starting to think about something like that, but uh, yeah, this is our recap uh, week 14. Uh, hope you guys all enjoyed, you know, send us a comment. What do you think? Uh, who's your, who's your MVP? Who's your non quarterback MVP? Who did we miss? Uh, are there any other guys that we should have had in our honorable, you know, mention section here as well. Um, subscribe uh, wherever you're at. Um, reviews are always great. We like comments. Uh, likes are awesome too. So, Keep those coming. Uh